All right, black farmers took the Biden administration to court this week over a $4 billion promise that never came to pass. The farmers say that the federal government broke its promise to help farmers of color get out of debt as part of the American Rescue Plan. But of course, angry white farmers held up the program in court for more than a year, and ultimately, Congress watered down the program, leaving black farmers even deeper in debt while dealing with these soaring costs. Joining me now is John Boyd Jr. He's the farmer and founder of the and president of the National Black Farmers Association, and Ben Crump, friend of the show. He's a civil rights lawyer and attorney for a socially disadvantaged farmer. Uh, ben, very happy to have you here. As you know, we have been with this story a long time on the Cross Connection. This law suit alleges that the U.S. government reigned, or reneged, rather, on its promise uh, to black farmers when lawmakers adopted this new language that pretty much expanded eligibility to a broader group. Um, what's the next step here? What do you hope to accomplish uh, with this lawsuit? And, and literally, like, who sees this? Like, where, where does this land and in what court? And how long could it be before these farmers see some justice? Well, Tiffany, thank you for having us. This is an issue that harkens back to 40 acres and a mule uh, and 150 years ago, but unlike 150 years ago, when they broke their promise to black soldiers and black farmers, they actually have an offer from the federal government that many farmers signed. And so that established a contract, and the farmers relied on that contract. You had the essential elements of a contract where there was detriment and benefit from each side, the uh, federal government and the black farmers. So we believe that it is a breach of contract issue in the court of law and federal court, but more importantly, in the court of public opinion, Tiffany Cross, this is about holding everybody who's seeking a congressional seat and a Senate seat. We want people in our community and the media to ask them, where do they stand with making sure the black farmers do not lose their farms? The president and the administration can put a moratorium on foreclosures. But then we can say, why didn't this money get out from the USDA, just like all the PPP loan money got out quickly before they could fulfill this self-fulfilling prophecy that the white farmers say this is reverse discrimination. It's almost yeah. as if they did not want to get the money out. Yeah, you know, um, Mr. Boyd, thank you so much for being here, because you and I have had this conversation a few times. And I just, I hearken back to the Bundy standoff, to, you know, what happened in Nevada, and how certain people are privileged enough to throw a, a damn near fatal temper tantrum, and you are asking for what is owed to you. So you have told our viewers before, I would ask you to tell us again, what is it you're facing, what have you lost, and what is it that you deserve? Well, thank you for, for having us. And uh, I'd like to uh, uh, thank Ben Crump for coming to the aid of uh, the nation's black farmers. And this is not a new fight, as you know, Tiffany. This is a 30-year-old request from uh, myself and other uh, black farmers asking for debt relief. Uh, we fought uh, for 30 years. We got two settlements in federal court, and we never got injunctive relief, which is the land and inventory. I never got my farm out of federal inventory. And none of the black farmers who who uh, went through this process, and we never got debt relief. Debt relief that white farmers got in this country with ease, that black farmers received a 30-day farm foreclosure notice, a loan acceleration notice in the mail, uh, asking us to pay the full balance up front. Black farmers had supervised bank accounts, including myself, where the white uh, lending officer had to sign off on all of our, all of our transactions. Uh, white farmers weren't treated this way. They right. received debt relief with ease. This administration knew about it. They had enough time to pay all of the black and other farmers of color all of the debt relief that they deserved, but they chose to wait and form some equity commission uh, and, and, and do studies and listening sessions. We don't need those things now at the worst economic times in history for America's farmers. $5 diesel fuel prices, uh, $1,200 a ton for for fertilizer, and I'm sitting here begging an administration for help that helps other foreign countries. Yeah. Uh, in this case, uh, in, in the war with Ukraine, they received $250 million in aid, which includes seed, uh, equipment, things I've been asking for the black farmers for three decades. And my own country didn't help us, but they made those things readily available for farmers in a foreign country. 
That is uh, incredibly heartbreaking. And every time you tell us that, it is uh, enraging. Yeah. And I just want to inform our viewers, Ben, because you well know this, the USDA's history of pro-white, anti-black policies uh, run deep. Um, in the New Deal, uh, after um, the legislation wanted to address low crop prices by, by reducing acres of farmland, it displaced uh, many black farmers. By 1964, the share of black farmer operators fell to 5.8%. By 1982, it was 2%. And you make a good point, Ben, because on the campaign trail, we hear all all the time. I remember hearing on many campaigns that I've worked on and, and covered uh, of people talking to farmers. The white was silent, but they were talking to white farmers. So how do we shift policy? How do we elevate these voices to make sure that these farmers are not forgotten on the campaign trail and certainly not on Capitol Hill and certainly not uh, throughout this administration? Yes, Tiffany Cross. Um, John Boyd is the heart and soul of black farmers, and he's brought people like Lester Bonner to my attention, who had are there for 118 years, but his Social Security check, he's a veteran in Vietnam, is being garnished to pay Farm Services Agency. And his wife, who passed last year, her Social Security check was garnished. So members of the Congressional Black Box Caucus has been reaching out to us since we filed the lawsuit to say, we agree with you, Ben, this isn't right. And we have to make certain that the government has to honor the contract that they made with black farmers. These politicians cannot promise us things to get our votes and then betray us after they get the office. We want it on the record. Are you going to stand with the black farmers and tell the secretary of agriculture, you make this right? Yes. Well, I, I right. certainly... Oh, go ahead, Mr. Boy, go right ahead. Yes, I, I was going to say, Ben is e exactly right. You know, 1.9 trillion acres of land in the United States. Black farmers own 20, only 20 million acres of land. Why do they want all of our land? In, in the first place, is my question uh, to the United States Department of Agriculture and the white farmers who sued us in 12, in 12 complaints in federal court. They don't want blacks to have the equal access uh, to, to credit when they do. You have uh, Native American farmers who suffered, Hispanic farmers, Asian, Asian farmers. But the fight for us is about land. This goes back to the land and taking away the land and using the United States Department of Agriculture uh, to do so. And I would like to say this about Secretary Vilsack. He's never came to an uh, annual conference. Uh, and this is his third time uh, serving as U.S. Agriculture Secretary, but they show up at the Farm Bureau and uh, National Farmers Union, and you can't say you about equity and you don't show up to uh, speak to and address to our nation's uh, uh, black farmers. We are facing discrimination at the United States Department of Agriculture. Fortune 5 companies such as John Deere and PepsiCo who won't contract with us. We have a host of issues, but this specific case is about a broken promise, just like Ben said, a broken contract. Black farmers signed those contracts, Native American farmers signed the contracts, Hispanic farmers signed the contract, sent them back in and made plans based on all of those uh, expectations, 120 percent debt relief, and they want us to trade it for a loan and to yeah. bring their, their, their uh, uh, cases up to uh, the, the delinquent amounts up to current. That's not debt relief. We want 120 percent what we were promised for, just like yeah. 40 acres and a mule, and we didn't get. And this time, America... Black farmers aren't going away. We got Ben Crump. We're not going away, and we're going to fight. And I got my mule named Jesus. Yeah. And uh, well, I got my mule, and I'm looking for my 40 acres. And America, and you, you, you need certainly... to stand behind the black farmers. Stand behind yeah. us, and now is the time to get involved with the black farmers movement and other black leaders. You need to get on this thing, because there's going to be an embarrassment for other black leaders yeah. who are not speaking out about this national not, yeah. uh, a tra Thank travesty you. that's happened to America's yes. black farmers. And it's not just black leaders. All leaders need to get on board. The, the onus yes. cannot just Amen. be on black leaders. All leaders, because black oh. farmers are, are, are integral oh. to this country.